Now, we looked at these um, yesterday and in you know, the past week or so, not to mention the rest of the course. So today I said, I'm promising more. So we're going to go from straight lines to parabolas to actually all in one hit, we're going to use technology to help us, um, three other kinds of graphs. Okay? The first one is, see how we've got power 1 for this guy, power 2 for this guy? What do you think is the next logical step? Power 3. three. So, um, here's the first one, the second one, here's the third one. Okay. Now, you might notice, as you increase in power, your terms or your ex equations get more and more complicated and messy. Okay? Um, that's because you can have more different terms inside here. If you go all the way up to 3, x cubed, you can have x squareds and, and x's and um, constant numbers at the end. So this is something really complicated, but you often get much simpler versions than this. Or if you get a messy one, we can use some technology to muck around with this. Okay? So I've been doing examples in orange, so let's have a look, for instance, at, we'll start with something simple. The simplest possible one, actually, is just y equals x cubed, which is why this is not called a straight line or a parabola, it's called a cubic curve. So on Desmos, go ahead and get rid of all of this stuff. Now, in order to get um, the power of 3, on Desmos you'll need to tap this button here, which says a to the power of b, because then you can pick any power you like, because there's, no, um, there's no cubed button here automatically. So hit that, you can see my cursor's up the top now, and I'm going to hit 3. There we go. So here's our cubic curve. Um, it bears some similarities to a, to a parabola, which we've looked at before. What kind of similarities can you see? Great, so it fits our definition. It's not linear, that's good. Um, do you notice this part over here? If you just hid, in fact, I am going to hide. If you hide the, uh, where's what I want? It's here. You don't have to worry about what I'm doing now. I just want to show you this part. If I just hid the left-hand side of the graph, and you didn't know what this graph was, if you just saw the picture, that looks a whole lot like a parabola, doesn't it? Right? And that should make sense because it's kind of in the same family of equations and functions, um, but it's not. If I go ahead and I bring it back and put x squared in the picture, let's put y equal x squared. Uh, like that. Okay. Um, you can see, while they've got similar kinds of shapes, how would you describe the blue graph in comparison to the green one? The blue graph in comparison to the green one. Yeah, the blue one, well, it's funny. The blue one is steeper for most of it. Uh, in fact, if I keep on going and going and going and going, the blue one is always steeper than the green one, except for this tiny little patch right here. Do you see that little spot there? It's just underneath. Um, I'll let you have a think about why that is the case. It's not so important right now, I just want you to notice that it is. Um, there's the other difference, of course. It's not just that it's steeper, if I get rid of this bit. When you see the whole thing, the other glaring difference is this guy down here, right? It goes down to the negatives. Why does it do that? This parabola doesn't, but the cubic one does. Why doesn't the parabola ever come down? Why does it go straight back up? This is, but wait, it's doing the opposite of that, isn't it? Um, I want you to think back. Now, here's where the table of values is so instructive for us. Ah, okay. So think about the values that you would put in here. For instance, if x is equal to negative 1, here's my x-axis, here's my y-axis. If x is equal to negative 1, then y is negative 1 times negative 1. But look, there's two negatives, which cancel and give you positive y. Does that make sense? If I try over here x equals negative 2, then y will equal negative 2 times negative 2, and there's two negatives again. So they cancel and they give you 4. Okay? But the cubic has no such problem, because when you cube negative numbers, they stay negative. Does that make sense? So all your negative x values also give you negative y values. Can I let you take a minute um, to draw this, please? So um, y equals x cubed is the one we're focusing on right now. And 
it's quite a, it grows really fast. As Emily pointed out, it's steeper than x squared. So these numbers up here get very big very quickly. So adjust the scale of your um, graph appropriately. If for instance, you wanted to go all the way to x equals three, which actually is not that far. What is y equal? If x is equal to three, y is going to be times three. That's going to be 27, isn't it? So you're going to have to go up pretty high. In fact, that's why mine is not on there. So I'm going to try and fix that. There we go. Ta-da. So you can see there's x equals three. It goes all the way up to 27. So I'll give you a couple of minutes now to draw yourself up a set of axes. You're going to need the whole lot there. And um, choose an appropriate scale. I think if you went over to x equals three, then y equals 30 is a nice round number to stop at up there. But also don't forget, if you go up to positive 30, have a look on this side. I need to zoom out. You're probably going to want to come down to negative 30 as well. So this is going to be a big vertical scale and not so much horizontally. Can you draw that for me? Try and get a nice smooth curve. OK, um, could you get your calculator out for me if you haven't got it already? Now what we're going to try out is this particular graph here, this one, this equation. We're going to test out some values. Okay? Now, when we test this out, we're going to notice something unusual. So let's see what happens. Um, when we try at x equals negative 1, you can go to your calculator. Just be watchful with your brackets, though, because if you want to do negative 1 cubed, typing in this to your calculator is not the same as that. What you really want to type is that. Okay, you've got to be quite watchful with your brackets because otherwise it's not applying the negative sign, it's not cubing the negative sign, which is kind of important. So the way you would punch this into your calculator would be like so. That's the way I would actually, that's what should be on your calculator display. And you're going to get a number out of this. Um, I think this is going to be negative 1, and this bit here will be minus 4. So I predict that this will give you negative 5. Can I get some confirmation? Yeah. Yep, happy times. So I've got a y value, that's good. You don't even need your calculator to work out the next value, because look, it's x equals 0. So just have a look, don't, don't calculate anything, just look at it. What will happen to this when x is 0? It's just gone. What about this guy? Also gone, so you just get 0. Okay. Um, go ahead, work out 1 and 2 for me. Um, I'll give you some time to catch up. And we're going to draw this, so you might want to start to put together a set of axes just like this. Use a different one. Don't do it on the same one as the one you just drew because it's going to get messy. Um, okay, um, can you tell me what y values you get out of these guys? Can someone tell me? Negative 3 and negative 8. Negative 3 and negative 8, is that right? Okay, now you've got a set of axes there, but something weird is going on. Because these four points, which I can read off here, they don't seem to match what I was expecting. Because have a look. Um, I want you to go ahead and plot these. Negative 1, negative 5. Uh, this is 0, 0. This is 1, negative 3. And this is 2, negative 8. Okay. Now, I'm going to start to plot these myself. So find where they belong. Okay, now we don't have the whole shape just yet. We're trying to discover what's going on by plotting points. But we get this, which is weird. If this is all you've got, and we know what kinds of shapes we're familiar with, what does it look like it's tracing out right now? What does it look like it's tracing out? It sure looks like it's doing this parabola thing, right? Except for the fact that we know there's a cube to there. This is a cubic. So it shouldn't be tracing out a parabola. What that indicates to us is um, these values that we've got at the moment, it's not enough. It's not enough. This part of it looks like a parabola, but that must mean we don't have the whole picture. So here's what I'm going to ask you to do. Uh, last time when we were experimenting, we went 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, I think. Um, we don't need to go quite that far, but we are going to need 
two more values on the end here. So maybe with the person next to you, one of you can work out three, one of you can work out four. Find out what they are and then plot them. Can you do that for me? Has anyone got a value for 3 yet? Minus 9? And the value for 4 should be 0. Have you got it? Did you get 0? Which shouldn't surprise you, by the way, because look, 4 cubed, and then here is 4 times 4 times 4, which is 4 cubed. So we can put these guys on as well. 3 comma negative 9 and 4 comma 0. Let's plot those on as well. Okay, so what have we just revealed? Well, even by the time we get to um, this green one here, I might get rid of the orange one. Even by the time we get to here, you can already see this is not a parabola, right? Like a parabola, if it really was, would come up, it would go down, and then what does it do after this? It just gets steeper and steeper and steeper. But look, this guy is kind of like, whoa, slow down. <laughs> he kind of seems to come back upward. And then by the time you put on this last point, 4 comma 0, um, you know you've got something completely different. You have this kind of wavy sort of shape. Okay, So you can connect these dots and lo and behold you should get this shape in total. There we go. So this is a cubic just like before, um, except it's just, it waves around a little bit before it does the same thing as this. You can see the negative values down here go all the way down, the positive values go all the way up. So this, just like our previous one, is another um, member of the cubic family. Okay, uh, So same kind of shape, but plotting the points gives us the exact kind of details of what's happening. Does that make sense?